The list of topics is significant. In simple terms, it's long. There's a lot on the table. Dr. William Parker, CEO of Parker Maritime Technologies on national security. And, you know, Bill and our back and forth, as we often do, what are the topics, what's of interest, what's not being covered? And this is quite a list, my friend. Uh, Iran trade, China, Russia off the U.S. coast right there in Alaska. Uh, Wagner Group in Africa. We didn't see the last of them after the little dust up with Vladimir. Uh, and uh, a bio lab in California in Central Valley. Also of interest. There's a lot of there's a lot on the table. So let's tie this all together. David, first of all, good to be back on your show. Yeah, this is uh, a crazy world. It's getting crazier, it seems like. I I guess we can jump right into Iran. You know, $6 billion uh, to the Iranians. Uh, We're going to get five Americans back, uh, supposedly. And not that every American isn't worth every penny. uh, uh, They certainly are. But the bottom line is we're putting more people in extremists by uh, starting to agree with uh, and, and negotiate with uh, with terrorists, and that's exactly what this is. It's one one point two billion dollars per hostage uh, is what this really is. The Iranians say, "Well, wait a minute," and 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 so does uh, this administration. Hey, it's only going to be used for food, water, and medical. Well, if you don't have to pay for food, water, and medical in your country. Then you have six billion dollars more to spend on other things. Can't imagine what that might be. Maybe weapons, uh, maybe more terrorist operations. Um, So it's a dangerous precedent for sure. Even the process here is concerning to me. And please, Bill, correct me if I have this wrong, but... If the money is supposed to be housed in Qatar and managed and, you know, kind of like an approval process, you know, a drawdown, a tranche of money, uh, how do we know that's going to be done correctly? And as you and I have talked about in the past, money is fungible. It's who you give it to and what they use it for. Now, you're, you're, you're spot on on that one. Uh, and they're saying it's money that's already out there. It's just being held, et cetera. And another thing I think we need to look at is, is talking to Congress about, hey, um, who holds the purse strings right now? Isn't that the U.S. Congress? Uh, now, I realize they're saying in this particular case it's, uh, it's funds that are already out there. But I think in each one of these cases now, uh, we need to go back and ask the question of who controls the purse strings. There's a reason why. We have three very specific uh, sectors of our government, uh, and, and, uh, and of course, Congress holds, uh, holds those purse strings, and, and that's a Republican Congress. So we need to ask them that question as well. And they're, they're doing a lot of good things, so, um, but, but I think we need to ask that question a little harder. Let's go back before you even wrote your book, Guaranteeing America's Security in the 21st Century. And I dare say you've been on this since the past century. So you've crossed the centuries, my friend. But China and Russia have been very active in the Arctic for some time. But now, even more so, there they are. And in in, in this recent, uh, I don't know if the right word is incursion, but let's call it presence. Uh, what's the message there? Or is there a message there for the rest of the world, not just America? Well, first of all, I would offer that for uh, for all those that haven't recently taken a good look at a, a world map, take a look and see that right across from the Bering Strait um, in Alaska is this country called uh, called Russia. And I think people forget sometimes, uh, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of that too. You know, you think, oh, they're over there, they're on the other side of the globe. No, they're right across the Bering Strait from one of our own states, Alaska. Uh, so that's number one. Two. Um, we did warn in that book uh, that if we didn't start building, if we didn't start building quickly, that China would surpass the United States in the size of our Navy. They have done that now. Um, and so China now has the largest Navy in the world. And that's concerning, considering that 90 percent by, uh, by volume, 85 percent by value of all the world's goods go by sea, um, not to mention just the, the maritime military part of this. Uh, and, and Russia and China are getting closer. And, and oh, by the way, they're now visiting with the North Koreans who are upping their ammunition and their, their weapons testing uh, dramatically. 
So when they do this and going beyond weapons, what else what else could they be saying? I mean, we, we did. I mean, is Russia, frankly, still upset? You know, we did kind of get it from them, but it was a legal deal. You know, we, we did the right thing. But are they also sending other messages about water and environment and real environment, not the, the argument over climate change, but other things they could do? Well, I, I, I think they are. I think that China, first of all, is saying, yeah, you guys are you you guys are uh, asleep at the switch right now. So we have lots of folks here in your country. We're rolling across the southern border. We're putting balloons over your skies and having them hover over your most strategic positions. Um, there's no real pushback on that uh, from us. And now we're operating with a major flotilla of of Russian and Chinese ships uh, right off your economic exclusion zone. 